So some of you might not know, but aside from being a professional annoying vegan, my other profession is writing. That's correct. I wasted my degree on finding out whether or not I could write stuff good. So it turns out I kind of can. So when I found out that an ex-vegan had made what seems to be a poem, a beautiful piece of prose, the alarm started digging in my head. So what I'm going to do today is review this poem. And the poem is about an egg. So it's going to be a double whammy. Before we get into it, it needs to be read and given the justice that it so deserves. So let's do that first. Gifted to me by my daughter. Wearing boots and a jacket for the first time in her life. A serendipitous egg. A sign that felt just as much an invitation as it did a threat. I carried it with me in my pocket on a walk home, feeling like I was carrying a secret. I laid it on my altar where it rested as I sat in front of the fire, the first time questioning how many old stories I held inside about how I was supposed to live, what I was supposed to eat, who I was supposed to be, the earth, the air, the fire, the water, return, 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 return. I ate this first egg with salt and reverence tears streaming down my face. After so many years, I thought it would taste awful, that it would be disgusting, that it would make me sick. It didn't. It wasn't. It tasted like childhood. It tasted like coming home. <laughs> that was beautiful. So time to dissect this poem from the lens of a writer and a vegan. So this starts very strongly with the symbolism. Gifted to me by my daughter. When we look at eggs, they are indeed a symbol of fertility. The egg of a chicken comes out of their cloaca, which is a bum vagina. And yeah, of course, these eggs are unfertilized. And you know, it's beautiful as well. I love a bit of a juxtaposition in poetry because these hens, they'll never have daughters. They are condemned to a life whereby they will continually overproduce unfertilized eggs so that people can eat them. So these hens are surrounded by other females who will never have daughters. And if they had daughters, they wouldn't see them. Wearing boots and a jacket for the first time in her life, a serendipitous egg. Very interesting use of an adjective there, you know, this unknown discovery, the, the writer is, is trying to suggest that out of nowhere they just, you know, had this thought that, you know, maybe it is time for me to contribute to animal abuse. Like, oh, we're starting to get an idea of the writer's feelings towards, you know, animal exploitation and killing. It seems as though the scene's being set up where the egg and its symbolism becomes more important than what actually happened, what was entailed in procuring that egg in the first place. But we'll see if that follows through in the rest of the poem. A sign that felt just as much an invitation as it did a threat. See, we're already, you know, coming through what she's seeing this egg as, you know, like an invitation, invitation to what? Oh, it's gripping me. I'm like, whoa, what, what, what are you being invited to do there? But it's also a threat. And, you know, again, we're setting the scene to find out, you know, the psyche of this writer. They're really giving us an insight to what they perhaps thought the identity, the label of vegan actually even meant in the first place. I carried it with me in my pocket on our way home, feeling like I was carrying a secret. And that bit for me, you know, I would argue that this is the strongest part of the poem, because I would say that the writer's giving us now the true insight to what they even believed veganism to be. It seemed it was more a label, you know, that seeing the egg, you know, if, if you use this egg, it is a threat to you, it is a secret, it is this symbol of deviance, rather than, you know, typically, you know, how someone might view veganism as, you know, rather than, you know, a writer who might talk about 
you know, the entailments of a given label. This is a very surface level. We're looking at the identity, the identity. If I take this, this is a threat to my identity, how I wish to be perceived. Rather than how, you know, I as a writer, if I were to write about animal rights, I'd be looking more, you know, at the lower level, you know, what actually has to happen to these animals in order for that egg to be there in the first place. So she's giving, you know, to use the egg analogy, she's giving the outer shell here. Uh, she's not really going for the yolk. I would have been really interested, you know, given that veganism is actually about animals, for her to get to the yolk of it. But I guess she did literally get to the yolk of it uh, without even considering the animal. Perhaps this is a look into her psyche. You know, maybe she is actually more interested in how she is perceived, what a label gives off to others, rather than assigning the label because of the meanings that it has behind it. Deep, bro. I laid it on my altar where it rested as I sat in front of the fire. On my altar. I feel as if this was just, you know, done so for, you know, dramatic effect. She's trying to paint a picture, obviously in poetry, the true flaccid and blandness of everyday life. It's, it's quite difficult to actually bring across in a poem in a way that you know, grips you. So I feel like this was just put in for dramatic effect. You know, the altar, a very symbolic place to put something like an egg. It is very interesting to use this description though, because you know, an altar is typically where you would place you know, gifts and sacrifices in order to worship or to pay respects to somebody, which again, a wonderful juxtaposition because we often like to say that the animals have sacrificed themselves for us, even though they didn't even consent to the matter. Their sacrifice is not ours to take, yet we take it anyway. And the idea of perhaps, you know, paying respect to somebody else, or she may even see the symbolism as marking the death of an identity that she had. So, I mean, if we're going with the psyche where there's a bigger focus on her identity and, you know, how she comes across, all the while that there's someone else involved in this picture who's not actually being addressed, it is giving off this very, you know, writer-centric view. Maybe she was going for that. For the first time questioning the many old stories I held inside about how I was supposed to live, what I was supposed to eat, who I was supposed to be. Yeah, I, I think it's becoming very clear that the, the psyche of the writer, she's really spelling it out for us that she was very, very focused on the identity and the ramifications of holding said identity and perhaps scared to leave that identity because of the consequences that would have for her. Obviously, when you hold a certain label, there are gonna be some people who actually take it seriously. You know, if you say I'm vegan, people might get the impression that you're actually following the label and believe that animal exploitation and killing is wrong. To understand something that has such horrific consequences to somebody else and then to turn your back on it, it can say a lot about a person. So perhaps she was, you know, rattling with her temptation at that moment, that deviation from something she was so used to, going against something that she knew would, would be wrong to do and rub people the wrong way, but it would truly rub her the right way just to try it. The earth, the air, the fire, the water, return, 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 return. Now, typically as a writer, it's very easy to cringe me out with certain poems. I do have a very low capacity for the cringe, and I must say the cringe hit me here, perhaps more so than anywhere. Unfortunately, the fire's already been mentioned, so to kind of add it into the mix, to be talking about the elements, it's kind of bizarre. There's, there's a hundred different ways to do this in a more creative or innovative manner, and it's just, it didn't pull off here. You haven't set the scene enough either to talk about where you're even returning to. So this was just kind of left a field. You didn't set it up enough for that moment. What place are you returning to? Like the only place I can think is the land of animal abuse. I ate this first egg with salt and reverence, tears streaming down my face. It's weird because reverence is synonymous with respect. Respect. 
<laughs> oh guys, I can't keep this bullshit up much longer. Oh my god. Not only does the writer deviate from her morals, it seems, but she also deviates from the poetic structure. One minute it seems like a poem, the next it kind of seems more like a story. And there's ways to do that, but the range is just completely off. Because you find yourself being like, with salt? Like, w w with actual salt, or were you salty at the time? There's the attempted harmony between descriptive language and, you know, a more creative tongue. And it's just, it's not working out here. I think this is quite comfortable as a reader to have a little read at this with the saying that she's eating the egg with reverence, i.e. respect, with tears streaming down her face. It's like she really gives us a chance to go into the shoes of the writer and try to understand her viewpoint where tears are streaming down her face. She's obviously feeling very conflicted. And then that makes the fact that she believes she is eating an egg with reverence kind of makes sense because she must have been all over the place. There must have been a lot of confusion. But given that the egg industry on the first day kills 50% of its unwilling participants simply for being the wrong sex, that one factor alone should be more than enough. More than enough. But, uh... Apparently not. And an industry that selectively breeds animals to overproduce a secretion from their body that often leads to health complications for them and deletes them out of existence the moment they can no longer be used as commodities. An industry rife with reverence. After so many years, I thought it would taste awful, that it would be disgusting, that it would make me sick. It didn't. It wasn't. Unfortunately, this is where the poem is just... You know, I'm going to start being harsh now, okay? One of the first lessons you learn as a writer is show, don't tell. To say, oh, I thought it'd make me sick, but it didn't. As a reader, that's just so void of any substance whatsoever. Kind of like a moral framework. Hmm. I see what she's doing. What you would have wanted to do here instead is kind of explain the process of eating the animal secretion, displaying signs of nervousness, anticipation, maybe having a lump in your throat or a tense feeling in your stomach out of said anticipation, and then conveying shock once you've actually consumed the secretion. There are a hundred different routes that could have been taken to make this more palatable, but unfortunately, we went for a cop out here. It tasted like childhood. It tasted like coming home. Again, a lot of show, don't tell. It would have been better at this point to recount a memory, you know, from childhood. The fact that she used her daughter at the start and then didn't even mention her at all again. That would have been a brilliant way to bring it back and actually end it. A wonderful thing in writing is when you begin something with a certain theme, a certain character, and then end it with such. And of course, in a poem, things should indeed have meaning for being there in the first place. What you do say is as important as what you don't say as well. You brought her in, and you could have used the symbolism of the daughter of youth to actually recount your own childhood feelings. But you didn't do it. Too much show, don't tell. This makes me think that I've indeed been duped and this wasn't even a poem at all. This is just how yoga girl speaks in her spare time. But you know, if it were intended to be a poem, I would rate this poem a 3 out of 10. There's not many moments that stuck out to me at all as a reader and, you know, made me go, ooh. Ooh. You know, as a, as a good piece of prose should. I like the bit about it feeling like a secret because I do think it really revealed the writer's feelings about animals, i.e. not many feelings about them at all. When you look at the product of exploitation in front of you, if you see it as some sort of secret, some sort of deviation, if you had it in your pocket and you were thinking about what you were going to do with it, that would convey that you're not looking at it from the victim's perspective whatsoever. If anything, when I see an egg, I just feel a bit angry, I feel a bit sad, I feel a bit, you know, I don't look at it and think, oh, cheeky. I'm going to cheat on veganism like I cheated on Jonathan. It just doesn't happen. So I like that. It revealed a lot. This is the issue with trying to write any sort of prose, poetry on Instagram. What you probably want to do, you know, it's just 
add to this because this is often neglected in the, the writing world and that is formatting. Now I would have personally added another image as part of the post where the poem would actually be nested and you know what I would have fully gone innovation and I would have made it look like an egg with little cracks in it. Just to go further with that symbolism you have the structure of the journey held within the poem. There's just so many ways that this could have been written and I'm deeply disappointed by this. If you'd like to see an example of the sort of thing that I like, I'll post it on my second Instagram account. It's more just me chilling, not killing. It wouldn't be very fair to put someone under the firing line and not show you know, what I do myself. So that's my perspective as a writer. Now for my perspective as a vegan. Elwood Dog Me pointed this out very well just how ludicrous this would actually look if this were involving another animal not an animal who we're so disconnected from socially that we just see them as a product before actually being an individual i am just very very sick of reading this shit where someone tries to put depth where it just isn't they try and make poetry and beauty out of their exploitative ways and just no longer giving a shit. It just reminds me of people who try and romanticize really toxic and abusive behavior and it's gross. Just say, look mate, my hedonistic pleasure took precedence in this moment and fuck the animal, okay? I don't want to do what I want to do because I don't want to feel like I can't do whatever the fuck I want anymore. And this is just one of the ways now that I may take control. And seeing as it is a social norm, to exploit and kill animals, the majority are going to be on my side anyway. And they'll be really supportive of me because the mean, mean vegans will be mean, mean to me. But you know already, I simply had to do this. I saw the opportunity, a piece of prose, I had to take it, okay? And now I feel a bit better. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you're well. And until next time, salats. I will see you soon. And don't give in to temptation. Don't let the magical egg tempt you. Okay, got you.